All right, everybody. <clears throat> um, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, we are going to cover some semi-controversial ground uh, today. Then we're just going to jump right into it, right? So the question is, will there be Christians here uh, during the tribulation time? Uh, more specifically, um, during that time that Jesus calls the Great Tribulation. And so I'm just going to read real quick. <coughs> Excuse me, I've still got a bit of a cough. Um, I want to read real quick uh, a scripture. It's a it's a scripture that gives us some direction um, out of Matthew uh, chapter twenty four. Very popular, right? It says in verse fifteen, Matthew twenty four verse fifteen says, uh, "When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him hear. Then them which are in Judea flee to the, into the mountains." Let him which is in the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Um, neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight uh, be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such, was, such as was not since the beginning of the world till this time, nor ever shall be. And it goes on uh, to explain all of the things that would occur during that time, right? Uh, and it talks about, um, you know, if, if anybody claims to be Christ, don't go to them. It says that in the beginning of Sorrows also, uh, but it restates it again. Uh, there's not going to be any secret coming of Jesus Christ, right? When Jesus comes back, uh, according to the very first chapter of the book of Revelation, it says that every eye will see him. How he's going to do that, I don't know, right? But it, it's not anything secret. And so... Um, <coughs> we go on to read, excuse me, um, uh, about his coming later in verses 29 through 31. You will read um, about the signs in the sky and all of that. But I want to focus, if I can, on Matthew 24, 15. It says, when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. So what's that tell us, right? Um, anybody right, studying the Bible sees that and there's a direction given. If you want to figure out this thing, if you want to try to figure this out, go and look at Daniel, right? Go and look at the book of Daniel. And so, um, guys, I'm not, you know, I, I don't claim to be a very smart individual by any means. Um, I'm a man, right? So following instructions is complicated, but this is what it says, right? To go to Daniel. And so that's what we do. And we turn over. And, and there's all kinds, right? Uh, the book of Daniel has got all kinds of things. Um, that we should study. But when we talk about this abomination of desolation, and, and you can start reading like in chapter 9 and all the way through the end of Daniel, and you will find this. I, I think Nebuchadnezzar in the image that was set up uh, is a great foreshadowing to the um, Antichrist that will come uh, and will put up the image that everybody will have to worship or they'll be killed according to the book of Revelation chapter 13, right? Uh, if you don't worship this image, and Nebuchadnezzar set this big image up, and then you got the three Hebrew boys that would not bow down to the image, they were thrown into the fire, um, and there was one with them. And let's not lose the fact, of, lose sight of this, right? There was one with them, uh, likened unto. Sorry, guys, there's a really pretty cardinal out there. Uh, one likened unto the Son of Man, right? Uh, one one likened to the Son of God. Sorry, uh, there with him, with them three Hebrew boys, and that was Jesus. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So, and, and you'll read about it like in Joel and uh, other, uh, Zechariah, all this stuff uh, about this um, abomination of desolation. You read about uh, in Thessalonians chapter 2, right, that the son of perdition or destruction is what uh, the Bible calls it. He will be revealed before Jesus comes back. We, we And it talks about all of these um, things and that he would be destroyed with the brightness of Jesus' coming. So, what is this, right? And, and, and I'm, so I'm going to read out of Daniel 11. And I, guys, I'm not, this is for time's sake, right? I'm not real big. Uh, we have been studying end time at the church. And uh, of course, we've had revivals and I've had to go, but I'm thankful that we've had to go do that and, and been able to go do that, been able to go preach some revivals. But there is a, um, it's, it's taken a long time to do this end time study because it's got to be very thorough. Uh, because there's all kinds of teachings uh, that are out there. There's all kinds of opinions, strong opinions. And can I say this before I go any further? Uh, if your opinion does not line up with my opinion, we can still be brothers in Christ. It's okay, 
right? Uh, I, I believe God allows us to have some different opinions about some things. But if your opinion doesn't line up with the scriptures, that's where we run into trouble, right? And we are commanded, whether it's popular, whether it's not popular, whether everybody was like, man, that, that feels good, right? I, not everything uh, in the word of God that feels good to us is bad, right? We know that Jesus came and died for our sins and gave us an opportunity to be set free. That feels good. That's a good thing, right? Sometimes you hear your preachers like, man, if it feels good at all, it's bad. Well, that's not the truth. So I'm going to go ahead um, and read in verse 31. It's Daniel 11, 31. It says, An arm shall stand in his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary. <coughs> Excuse me. They, um, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. This sounds a little bit familiar, correct? And it says, um, And such as do wickedly against the covenant, uh, shall he corrupt by flatteries. Right? So we'll read in the uh, before, earlier in Daniel, you'll read how this person, this Antichrist, will rise to power by, by speaking, by words, by, by having a smooth tongue. And, and uh, it won't even be by war necessarily, it'll just be by speaking, by having that smooth tongue. And it says, um, and also shall do wickedly by flatteries, but the people that do know their God, this verse, I'm going to read verse 32 again. It says, and such as do wickedly um, against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But... The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits or do action, right? In verse 33 says, And they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help, uh, but many shall cleave to them by flatteries, right? Many people... Uh, will be trying to cleave to these ones that know by flattering them. And it says in verse 35, And some of them of understanding shall fall, to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. The king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that um, is a determined, for that, that is determined shall be done. So, I'm going to read real quick in Second Thessalonians about this son of perdition. Right, This kind of helps tie this together, so I hate to leave it out. I wasn't planning on it, uh, so give me a minute here. Uh, I know it's in my Bible. All right, here we go. Second Thessalonians, I'm in Timothy, I'm close. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus, by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, for as uh, from us as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, uh, except there come a fallen away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Right? And so, here we have the son of perdition raising to power, the son of destruction. You have the abomination, right, that, that causes desolation placed in the temple, if you will, and we can get into all kinds of those discussions, and those are good discussions, and we need to have them, but not today. That's not the discussion I want to have. The discussion I want to have, plain and simple, is are there Christians here during that time? After the rise of the abomination of desolate, after that occurs, will there be Christians here? It is very clear, according to Second Thessalonians, that the son of perdition is that Antichrist figure. There is no doubt in our mind, there's no way, biblically, that you can get around that, right? You can do all kinds of things, and can I tell you this? Antichrist does not mean one world government. Antichrist does not mean he'll have all of the money. Antichrist does not mean that you'll have to take a mark to buy, sell, or trade. Is that there? You bet it is. But Antichrist is against Christ. What is that Antichrist figure going to do? 
Take away the daily sacrifice. And I know you Christians today are going, but we don't sacrifice anymore. What is our daily sacrifice? Our daily sacrifice is Jesus Christ. He died for us. He gave us the opportunity for salvation. We don't have to sacrifice any more uh, animals because of Jesus Christ, right? Therefore, Antichrist, think about that name, Antichrist will try to stop people from worshiping Christ. Now, one Quick little way of thinking that I am. Maybe you're not this way. But how could something try to stop somebody? How can you stop somebody from serving Christ if there's nobody here serving Christ? And to further this, let's go over to Revelation 13 real quick. And guys, I am not trying to cause division. I am trying to prepare people. And you know what? Let me be honest with you. If you have a, like a, a different view, um, it's okay. Let's talk about that view. Let's not get mad at one another. Let's not throw a fit at one another. Let's not do the things that so many people do today that if you disagree with me, then you're a hateful, no good individual. Let's not do that, okay? Let's be honest about these things. Let's, if you have a different view and you have a different viewpoint, put in the comments below. Let's talk about it like grown adults and not act like children, okay? And so, um, let's read, uh, Revelation 13, it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, <coughs> and saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto the leopard, and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered at the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened, I'm reading fast because this is, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time. It says, and he opened uh, his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. So what are we talking about right now? We're talking about that same son of perdition from 2 Thessalonians, who, as we know, goes back to Daniel, which Jesus told us to turn to in the book of Matthew. It's almost like Jesus knows what he's talking about, right? And so, um, it says, And it was given unto him to make war with what? To make war with the world? To make war with people that don't know God? To make war with people that hate God? This Antichrist is going to make war with people that hate God. No, it's not what he said. He said, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth uh, shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Wait, who? And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That says there's two groups of people here at this time, right? There's some that are here whose name's not written in the Lamb's book of life, and there's some that are. It says, if any man have an ear, let him hear. How many of you know, biblically speaking, when you come across this, pay attention, right? It says, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killed with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the world. Here is the patience and faith of the people that don't believe in God. Here is the patience and faith. No, it's not what it says. It says, here is the patience and faith of the saints. Second beast. And I behold another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. Here we go, we're getting on to something again. And he exalteth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth, and them which dwell uh, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth um, great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven, uh, from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceit with them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power in the sight of the beast, saying uh, to them that dwell on the earth, they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause, uh, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So who's not going to worship this image? Who's not going to do that? It's going to be Christians. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? They said, we won't bow down to your, uh, your image because that's not our God. We won't bow to that. Who, who would, who would, let me, let me keep reading. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and on their forehead. 
uh, and that no man might buy, sell, buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Uh, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Surely you know this, right? Six, six, six. Everyone knows this, and we can talk all day long about whether it's a, a microchip or whatever, you know, whatever. That, none of that is not what I'm trying to get to today. What I'm trying to get to today is I want you to consider who would he be killing? Who, knowing this is coming, knowing the mark is coming, knowing you have to have this to buy, sell, or trade, right? If you are not a child of God, what conviction would stop you from taking this that he would kill you? Because remember, verse 15 says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that, cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If your life depended on it, and, and this is, it's a little easier when you just think about yourself. It's men, men, husbands, listen to me. What about your family, okay? What about your wife and your kids, right? If you're going to starve to death, if you're going to die because you don't have enough food, or you're going to die because you won't worship something, that's one thing. What about your wife? What about that little baby back at your house that don't have food? What about that, that kid at your house, that child, that son, that daughter that you've held, that you've helped take care of, you've changed their diapers, you've wiped their butt, you've bathed them, you love them, you care for them, you're doing all you can to teach them? Would you really allow them to see these things and to go through these things if you, Christian, if you had anything stopping you other than your deep convictions to serve God and God alone? Would you have anything inside of you that says, I need to not do this? No, of course not. Of course you would take the mark. Of course, without a deep, <coughs> a deep conviction inside of you that says, listen, my God commands me not to do this. Without that being there, what was stopping you? Nothing. Nothing's going to stop you. Nothing at all. So, all of that being said, what... Is this Antichrist going to fight against if there's no Christians here? What is this beast and the second beast? Who are they going to kill if there's no Christians here? Who's going to come against them if it's not the children of God? Now, I didn't just come up with this, right? This isn't just some theological, like, I'm just going to, you know, read Matthew and I'm going to try to make it say, listen, I want for everything inside of me, I would love to be able to get on here and say, listen, uh, child of God, uh, don't worry about it, right? Uh, you just keep on keeping on, and one of these days, boom, you're out of here and gone, right? No, that's not the case, right? You keep on keeping on, one of these days, boom, you are out of here gone, but it may be a lot later than what you think, possibly, right? I'm not going to sit in here and tell you, you know, I'm the generation. Uh, I'm not going to say that, uh, but what I am saying is, can we be honest with ourselves and I've heard so many arguments, right? Well, a loving God will not let his children go through that. Listen, do you have you heard what happened to Jesus? Jesus, the sinless one. Have you read how they beat him? Have you read how they nailed him to a cross? Have you read how they shoved a spear? Have you, have you read how that they hated him? They didn't like him. They said everything they could. They lied about him. They did all kinds of things to try to stop him. Yet he took those things for you and I, that we may be saved. So then you think, okay, well, that was Jesus. That was a, a an example, but that's a rare example, right? There's only one Jesus. Okay, I, I follow your train of thought. I can go down that road for a little bit. What about Peter? What about Paul? Um, did those guys ever face any trial, trouble, trials? Did they get imprisoned for their beliefs? Did they kill them? Did they kill some of them? Did they try to come against them? Uh, were those not children of God just like you and I are supposed to be today? Guys, I, I want you, I, I know I, I'm a little fired up maybe about this, but uh, if you think this is fired up, you should come to church. Um, when the Spirit comes, it's hard to be quiet. It's hard not to be excited. I want you to understand something. Um, I am not sitting here today saying anybody and everybody that has ever taught that you will be out of here by then is some sort of demon, right? That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying to you is that a couple a week ago maybe I put out, you know, do you understand why you believe what you believe? If you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture view, meaning before this time, listen, 
Jesus called that the time of from the from the rise of the abomination of desolation from the time that occurs on is is called great tribulation. So let's just take that time frame, if you will. Let's not worry about Daniel seventy weeks. Let's not worry about all of that. Let's just take this abomination of desolation and the great tribulation that would occur between there. Do you have anything biblically that you can stand firm on? That you can go to scripturally. If you had proof like this scripturally, if you believe that, that's okay. Why do you believe that you will be? Do you have anything at all? And and I I know right. Uh, some of the most famous arguments that I get right is well the church isn't listed after um, you know Revelation chapter three and that's just not the case. Uh, the word church may not be listed after Revelation chapter or whatever it is, three, whenever the letters are to the churches. Um, but people of God are listed time and time again. And who are the church? What is the church? It's not your building. It's not the brick and mortar structure you're in. It's not the one made out of wood and siding or metal or any of that stuff. We, we are the church. Me and you and saved, blood bought, born again people. We are the church. And so people of God are listed. In fact, can I read something just real quick? Once again, this is not, uh, this is after the rise of the Antichrist. And verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. During this time, the time that we just read about, all of this, the 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 rise and 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 the war and all of that, blessed are those that die in this time, because you rest from your labors. Man, that's mind blowing, right? Because we forget as Christians, as children of God, death death is not. It's a big deal, right? Like we're going to die. It'll be a big deal. But at the end of the day, that's not the end of the day, right? We have eternal life. We are going to be able to live forever with Jesus Christ. <laughs> Stephen, you think Stephen was like, yeah, we'll never face tribulation. They were like hurling stones at him, right? The apostle Paul, he was left for dead, right? They, they were like, look, we stoned him, we'll just leave him dead. And they gathered around him, was praying, and here he come. Uh, he was fine. Uh, guys, the idea that Christians will not face tribulation at all is is just outrageous, right? You won't find that uh, scripturally. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to burst anybody's bubble. You just won't find it. And so, now I want to ask you that time that Jesus talked about way back off over here in Matthew. Let me turn back over there. It's going to take me just a minute. Um, this time that Jesus calls great tribulation, right? I didn't make this up. I'm not doing some math to get there in Daniel 70 weeks and and, and we can talk about all that, and but we're going to wait until the Lord give me some better understanding because I don't understand all of it, truth be told. <coughs> but can we at least can we, can we focus in on this just for a minute? Immediately, uh, no, nope, wrong spot. <clears throat> when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. We just read it over in Daniel 11, right? Um Stand in the holy place. What did Thessalonians say? He'll stand in the holy place. He'll claim to be God. He'll come against everything. We read over in Revelation then that this, this son of perdition, the son of destruction, all of this, that, that, that he will come against the saints. He will try to overcome the saints. He'll be able to overcome the saints. He'll be able to fight against them. He'll be able to kill them and destroy them. And then all of those that won't take the mark or that won't worship the image will all be beheaded. Who, who would be beheaded? Who? I still want to know who would stand, right? Who, not God-fearing, not Christian, not having those deep convictions. Who would look at that and go, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I would rather, I would rather die um, knowing, not, not knowing whether or not I have eternal life, not knowing whether or not I know Jesus Christ, not knowing whether or not there's anything on the, some atheist that's like, you know what, uh, we come from scum, pond scum, that eventually made it into uh, a, a monkey that decided to get up and walk across the field one day, and sort of somehow not all the other monkeys figured it out because they were all too stupid, and so uh, now we have these really smart monkeys that turned into humans, right? Even if you go that route, that that atheist is going to is he going to look at all of this around him and say, well, I'm, I might as well fall and worship that thing so I don't die. Would he would he do that? No, no, absolutely not. He's going to worship. He's going to worship. Anybody that doesn't have a deep conviction that there's a penalty to pay, that there's a cost to pay, that's greater than this life. What the Apostle Paul says, he said, we don't have life. 
or hope in this life only, right? So, <clears throat> will there be people of God, which I will call Christians? Are we Christians? Or is people of God Christians? Yes, right? What makes you, um, what made Israel Israel? Circumcision of the heart in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, what turned Jacob's name into Israel? What made him Israel? I mean, he wrestled with God. I mean, and, and, and to me, I liken that into our wrestling with our flesh and, and coming to understand that we can't do this ourselves. We need God to bless us. That's what Jacob said. He said, I'm going to wrestle until you bless me. Right? And so, people of God, time and time again, have faced tribulation. And there has been time and time again the false prophets in the Old Testament would stand and say, you will not face this trial. You will not face this tribulation. God is going to take you out of here, Israel, before this bad stuff happens. And here's like poor old Jeremiah going, I'm sorry, that's just not what God's telling me. Right? Uh, guys, I, I know I'm, I'm fired up. I need to probably settle down. I want you to understand something. The reason I'm passionate about this is because that falling away is going to occur before uh, that um, son of perdition is revealed, right? And then after he's revealed, I'm afraid it's going to be even worse. And the reason why I'm afraid it's going to be even worse is because so many people are going to say the Lord delayeth his coming like we have in Second Peter chapter 3, right? The Lord delayeth his coming. Uh, we're going to have the servants turn and begin to beat the servants around them um, and say the Lord surely delayeth his coming. Guys, no matter what, occurs in our lifetime no matter what occurs in this world around you no matter what listen we live in the united states of america right we are so blessed that that it's outrageous it's absolutely uh, i complain about my tap water for goodness sake it's safe i can go and get a drink of water and my little self goes you know i'm tired of drinking that tap water i sure would like some sweet tea or a coke really that's it's spoiled Spoiled we are here in the United States. And we have this crazy idea that we won't ever face any hardship. That's insane. And we won't find that scripturally. Guys, we just won't. Um, we're starting to see here now in the United States um, people kicking against Christians. And they're beginning to actually have problems. Instead of just talking about it, um, they're beginning to go into churches and shoot them. Uh, people, they're beginning, which I'm not glorifying that, um, in the name of Jesus, I pray uh, that God would protect his people. But I want you to understand something, okay? Um, those trials and tribulations are going to come. They're going to happen. Uh, that mark of the beast, it's coming. Uh, it's going to happen. That antichrist system, that antichrist, it's going to happen. It may not be for me. It may be generations after me. And it may be next week. We know understand how quickly our world can change around us. Guys, I, I hope and I pray that I have not offended you. That's not what I'm trying to do. Once again, I know I'm fired up over this, but I, I, I don't want to offend you. I want to have an honest conversation. If, if you have a pre-tribulation rapture view, please put something in the comments that biblically will, will show that. Um, not just your thoughts, not just your opinions. Um, study it out biblically, thoroughly. It's all of the scriptures, not just even not just the few that I give you here today. Uh, study all of them, a bunch of them. Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Revelation, all of that stuff. Study all of that out and see if you can biblically stand on anything uh, that makes it uh, a pre-tribulation rapture view. I'm afraid that you're not going to be able to. Um, right? So the church, not after chapter 3. That's one of them. Uh, the people of God are listed after chapter 3. Uh, uh, the the uh, Second Thessalonians, right? Uh, him that restrains taken out of the way. That's another popular one. Uh, guys, that's not the Spirit of God. Yes, God restrains. God is ultimately the one keeping uh, all of this because it's for yet an appointed time. And when God <laughs> allows that appointed time to come through, uh, according to the book of Revelation, you'll read how he gives the keys uh, to an angel that opens up the bottomless pit, right? And this Apollyon, 
uh, leader over all these locusts or whatever it is, whatever the Greek and Hebrew is, what it translates to is destruction, which is ironic, right? Uh, there's just not a good argument uh, you're, that I can find. If you can, please change my mind, right? Please find it in there. I would. Uh, I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. I go and I, I, every once in a while I get to preach revivals. You know how much more enjoyable uh, it may be to stand and say, "Listen, my brothers, my sisters, you don't have to worry about this time because you're going to be out of here. Get saved before it occurs." Instead, right now, biblically speaking, the only way that I can stand is to say, "Get saved before this occurs," because you'll be fooled if not. Guys. I love you guys. I pray for you guys. If you are not a Christian, uh, I don't mean to scare you. I don't mean to run you off. What I mean to tell you is that within the family of God, we argue every once in a while. We we debate every once in a while. Those are good things. People think they're bad. They're not. They're good things. Uh, the world, most people are looking for a reason not to serve God. And so they'll look at that debate. They'll look at that uh testing of one another. Listen, I've got some Christian brothers and sisters that press me on my beliefs. I need that because I don't want to just be able to say, well, some teacher told me that. Well, my grandpa, who was a pastor for years, I don't want to be able to just to, and, and, and still serve in God. I don't want to be able to stand up and just say, well, grandpa taught me that. So it has to be. Listen, my grandpa's a good man. Uh, he, I believe he done his very best and has done his, and will do his very best to teach and preach what's in the scriptures. Uh, but the plain and simple is uh, we're, we're mere men and we'll mess up, right? scripturally speaking, sound doctrine. Can you run your views through this Bible, through the, whatever, through, uh, listen, right, it doesn't have to be this. This is a King James Bible. It can be any of the translate. Can you run it through any good, solid translation and it still work? Or does it get stopped? Because biblically speaking, it won't flesh out. Guys, I, I hope I haven't scared you away. I'm going to lose some people over this, I know. Because this is not a popular view. This is very unpopular. And I don't believe in having unpopular views just because they're unpopular. And I don't believe in having popular views just because they're popular. Right? I just want to know what the truth is. And guys, if, if at all, there's a pre-tribulation rapture at all, uh, I will gladly change my mind on the way to see Jesus. Right? Uh, I don't believe this is one of those issues that's going to keep us out of heaven. But I do believe it's an issue that could keep many people uh, that could cause many people to fall away. And so guys, I hope and I pray um, that you look at this honestly, that you look at it with an open uh, mind scripturally. Uh, I, I pray, uh, my prayer whenever I study the Bible is for God to take all of my preconceived ideas and just get them out the way and let the Bible determine what I believe. Uh, and that's my prayer for you, that you will allow the Bible to determine what you believe, not some teacher, not some preacher. Let the Bible determine what you believe. Guys, thank you. Uh, we'll be praying for you. Um, if I have anybody left watching this, I'll try to put some more videos out, uh, maybe about this end time stuff. I've got tons and tons of notes um, because it's what we've been doing in our church lately. And so, um, thank you guys, and we'll see what else is to come. Appreciate you.